Welcome back to WebCertain TV. I'm Gemma Houghton. Today I'm with Philly Visa of Search Brothers and we're going to talk about the very important topic of site speed. So hi Philly, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So why are we talking about site speed? Why is it so important? So uh, site speed is important for a number of factors, but uh, one is uh, user experience. Um, users tend to find uh, sites attractiveness based on design and speed. So if your site isn't speedy, then you know users tend to go away. Another, uh, another factor uh, is also that Google has started to use it as a ranking factor a while ago. Now, it is a very minor ranking factor, but it is still one that you want to utilize. Uh, if all else is equal with your competitors, except for this one, then this could tip you over the over the, the edge and yeah. improve your rankings overall. Um, but the primary reason uh, I would actually say is uh, profit, as simple as that. Yeah. Uh, there's been num numerous of studies throughout the years um, where, uh, including from the big ones like Amazon, Google, etc., cetera, um, that have basically shown that delays on loading of a website, even by a few tenths of a second, uh, makes a significant single or double digit impact on profit. So from a business point of view, yeah. it's kind of like a no-brainer. Um, then a last thing, and that's also uh, that comes back to the profit and the user experience combination, mm -hmm. um, it's actually uh, uh, it actually lasts. So the problem is that if your website is perceived as slow, people and people know this, they just From won't the, go there. They won't go back. They, the yeah. returning visitors tend to be lower on slower websites. Yeah. So uh, from that perspective, profit would be one of my main reasons. Yeah. Now, from an SEO perspective, just to add that, uh, other than the search uh, 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 ranking signal, which mm -hmm. is an important one, but it's not the primary one for SEO that we actually should be focused on with speed. What we should be focused on is if we have a large website, speed determines how quickly uh, Googlebot and Bingbot, etc., will crawl your website. If your website is too slow um, in responding, then the search engine bots will go like, oh, you know what, I don't want to bring this site down, and you seem to have trouble with me accessing your website yeah. because you're, you're having a slow response. So they don't want to... Um, they want to err on the on the side of caution, so they don't crawl your website as fast as they could. Which also means that a lot of your content may actually not They're get indexed, indexed yeah. or refreshed or recrawled as frequently as you should. So, as such, from an SEO perspective, crawls, uh, crawl budget speed is kind of important. Indexing speed is important, yeah. and from a business point of view, profit. Absolutely. So, what are the most common mistakes that you you know that cause issues with site speed and cause a page to be slow? Yeah, so I see two two main reasons why um, uh, pages tend to be slow, and a lot of people are focused on the front end, which is one of the two. The other one is back end. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, when we're talking about front end, uh, this is where a lot of optimization happens, and this needs to happen. Don't get me wrong there. It is essential that you optimize your delivery of CSS, images, uh, JavaScript, mm -hmm. um, uh, etc. Uh, also, that you use uh, progressive uh, enhancement, uh, content first strategy, so that your critical path rendering is as such that the content will be shown even if not everything is loaded yet. Mm -hmm. um, so, from that perspective, Front end is one of the things that you can do a lot. What I see problems with is that a lot of people don't use progressive enhancement or that they do have too many HTTP requests and too heavy page loads. So talking about an average of about 1.8 megabytes uh, of, of a site, uh, the size of a single page. Um, now, 1.8 megabyte might not be much on the desktop, but on mobile, it's really a lot, yeah. especially if you're on a poor connection. Yeah. So um, that's one thing. and. I see that there's still some a lot of optimization that can happen there. <laughs> now, from a back-end perspective, um, it's relatively simple. A lot of people don't even look at it. And it's really a shame. Because uh, how, if you run, for example, a WordPress bl uh, blog and you have a number of plugins installed, I would absolutely recommend profiling those plugins. Now, there are plugins to profile plugins. <laughs> of course, there's a plugin for everything. Yeah. Um, but you need to do this. You need to see where are the queries happening, which queries are happening, how many queries are happening, and how much is this delaying the actual rendering of the page between when the server re uh, receives the request to serve the content and the moment the actual content is sent to the user. That part uh, really, literally, can sometimes take seconds. 
and if you, there are big wins there. And yeah. a lot of people don't look at that. So profiling uh, how your system works, how, how quickly you run, how many database queries you have, can you reduce some of those? Can you cache some of those, like using memcache or something like that, uh, in, in memory of the server? Mm -hmm. uh, this, all this kind of stuff can significantly help improve speed. And if you're building a new website, so you're kind of starting from scratch and you can make it as fast as possible from the start, what is it? how can you kind of make sure that you're doing that? What is it that you need to have in place to, well, to stop issues occurring in the first place? Yeah, so did, uh, when, when um, there's two things there. One is when you design a new website, now the question is obviously, uh, are you using an existing CMS platform or are you programming your own? Mm -hmm. In the last case, uh, you can, it all depends on your design. Like, is it optimal designed? Are you sending queries to the database that you shouldn't be sending in the first place? Stuff like that. Um, that kind of stuff, that's all designed that you need to talk to your engineering mm -hmm. team or your developer team to sort that out and think about it. Um, if you're using existing platforms, I would most definitely look at uh, uh, benchmarking them and seeing which ones performs faster. Uh, get some of your most complex uh, or a variety of, of complex code uh, and content pieces that you have yeah. that you want to push out with the new platform and benchmark each one of them on different servers in different cloud solutions yeah. to see like, hey, where is it faster? Um, when we're talking about uh, a new website, um, you also need to think about really like what do you want to serve the user. Um, that other part is very important because a lot of people overthink it or think, oh yeah, we'll fill the content in later. Oh, you might actually want to start writing the content before you actually start writing the code. Yeah, so that you make the, if that's the content you need to have, you make sure that it works yeah. as effectively as so, possible. Yeah, so a lot of uh, what happens nowadays uh, in the in the last few years, there's been a, a, like this mobile first uh, uh, initiative, and it's not a bad initiative of like approach of like let's make sure that it works well on mobile, yeah. and then we'll worry about how it works on desktop. And it's a good approach to minimize, mm -hmm. and I like it, but we should actually be focusing on a content first uh, yeah. approach. Because if the content isn't there, it doesn't matter how fast it looks in mobile, because no one's gonna care about it. So a content first uh, also means that you might actually be prepared not just for mobile devices, but in the end also for Internet of Things and other types of yeah. uh, devices that we haven't fully embrace yet. So, but that will change. And that was actually going to be another question of mine about the kind of content that you have, because obviously, you know, things like video are clearly becoming much more important, you know, really good quality images and infographics and that kind of thing, which are well known to be the kind of things that will slow pages down, obviously. So when you are developing your content, how much should the, the speed issues affect your decision on which content to use? And, you know, if you do really we're going to rely heavily on video, is that is that a good strategy to have still? You can absolutely rely on video, that's not a problem, uh, but you do need to load smartly. So that means um, you may want to provide a text version, like a, a, a screen capture, like where they, basically a the basically a transcript where the whole thing is written out. Um, you want to provide something like that on the website and only load the video after that has already been loaded. Okay. So asynchronous deferred loading through JavaScript, which also is again asynchronous and deferred load loaded. So the, the DOM is already rendered, the page is there for the user. It should be a, a pretty fast response to the user. Mm -hmm. And then based on the user request, you actually start loading the video. Okay, so it's yeah, just thinking through the process to make yes. it as efficient as possible. Yes, and also think about this. Not everyone is loading a page to actually watch directly the video. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of users uh, are happy to actually click the play button. So I yeah. know that there, if you're a content only, uh, like a video only content platform, uh, you tend to think, yeah, the video is the most important. That has to play straight away, and otherwise everything is lost. Sometimes people want to make that decision first before they start yeah. hearing audio. Yeah, they maybe want to actually yeah. yeah see what's on the page and before do they want to watch they that actually, video? Yes, yeah. because that's not always uh, uh, the case that people want to watch it. Um, yeah. they first want to see what's the page title. Yeah, what what is the topic of the video that's, uh, that that yeah. I'm about to start? Yeah, and actually a transcript with some of the highlighted if they Will see the key already, points, yeah. give them or that a summary or clue something like that as to so. whether they want to get involved and watch it all or not. Yes. Yeah. So from that perspective, even from a usability perspective, uh, although I would. Do some, uh, some A/B variation testing on this. 
you may want to not automatically start video straight away. So I also have to ask you about AMP because clearly that's the topic of the hour at the moment, it seems, in this kind of area. A lot of people are talking about it. From your perspective, is it a good thing, bad thing? Should everyone be using it? So um, I like AMP, uh, uh, absolutely. I do not think everyone should Im have to implement it. Uh, it is an interesting discussion that's going around it. I also think it's probably a bit too overhyped. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I do like the suggestions that AMP. Actually, if you want to learn a lot about optimization uh, and take a lot of tips, especially if you're a beginner, do look at the restrictions that AMP put on websites. Mm -hmm. uh, you can learn so much about like, okay, let's reduce uh, the total CSS for a single page it has to be within 50K mm -hmm. uh, kilobyte and has to be loaded inline in the header. Uh, why should you even have a separate CSS file? all this kind of stuff, or like, do we actually need so many uh, JavaScript files to, to load the different functionalities? If we cut that away, does it still work? Um, just as a fun fact, I was uh, looking at the Brighton uh, SEO website, mm -hmm. uh, just a homepage alone. Uh, you can run with Google Developer Tools, you can run an audit, and you can find that about 2,500 CSS classes are unused on the homepage. That's two and a half thousand CSS classes that have to be loaded in code. But don't even, but aren't needed. They're not, okay. at least not on the homepage. Yeah. Like they might be used on other pages, but you want, may want to split some of these things up into different ones yeah. that you uh, load different CSSs or that you basically cut out the mustard and only load what's actually necessary. Yeah. So there's a lot of optimization uh, tips in AMP. Uh, AMP. Um, what I actually find more and uh, uh, more important than AMP right now is the development of HTTP2 because that allows us to uh, use smart browsers, uh, smart servers to push to uh, browsers content before the browser has even requested it. The challenge there at the moment is the biggest challenge actually is uh, knowing what the client has or the browser has already in its cache yeah. without violating the privacy. So there are still some challenges there, yeah. but. Um, Pages tend to load significantly faster on HTTP2, okay. so and for that we need to be on SSL and HTTPS, and that is again another topic again. Yeah. So, so there's a lot to be thinking about on this yes. topic, but ultimately the main point is your site needs to be fast, or you're going to suffer as a result. Yes, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. From a both uh, from an SEO perspective, especially if your site is big. Yeah. If your site isn't that big now, if I'm I'm talking big. Uh, I'm referring to sites over uh, 100k uh, or more. Yeah. Uh, that is big. Medium, I would say, somewhere between 10 and, and 100, and small, I would say, relatively small as anything under under 10 10k. Okay. Uh, the thing is that 10k is something that Google easily crawls. That's yeah. not a problem. They can crawl that in a day if your site is fast enough and the links are there. Your internal linking structure is good. Google can crawl that. That's not a problem. Will they crawl that? That kind of depends on how good your content is and how important yeah. uh, you are ranking in the search results, etc. But that's a different story. Google can crawl 10K easily, mm -hmm. so that's not a problem. If you have uh, 5 million uh, URLs, it's again, Google can crawl that on a day, but you need a fast infrastructure for yeah. that, and you should also not block them. If you have 100 million uh, uh, documents, now we're starting to look a little bit at like, okay, how we're going to deal yeah. with that. And there are plenty of websites still, obviously some of them are the big guys, that have over a billion documents. And yeah. then you start really one, <laughs> yeah, then we're still, then optimization becomes crucial. Yeah, and very <laughs> for, challenging. For index, yeah, and for indexing speed. So yeah. that's one of the things you absolutely, uh, like if you look at the fastest uh, sites, they are often the big guys that have a lot of pages and they yeah. do that for a reason. Yeah, great. Well, thank you very much. Loads of great tips there today. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks.